Hello everybody and welcome, it's Vidan here. So glad that you can tune into another video. Today I'm going to show you how to easily beat Leech in 4 minutes 30. But to be honest, this is really um, a way to do it in 4 minutes or under. Just be more optimal than me and don't scuff tier 5 as bad as I did. Okay, but for tier 1, what we need to do is, is just what I showed you in the previous video that I've just uploaded, which is set up the perma spike. okay? I believe you could actually just go mob eliminations, mob assassins, spam. That may even be a little bit quicker. But um, just follow that strategy. Okay, for tier two, we're going to be using perma spike again. So make sure you get it set up in the same location. What I want you to do is on round 57, get a call to arms ready. Make sure that you've got the perma spike set up and have an overclock, at least one overclock. Then it's going to be a matter of spamming overclock and call to arms until round 60. Okay, this should create a nice healthy pile of spikes that's going to pretty much do all the work that we need for round 60. Of course, make sure that you sell the alchemist. We don't want to get any extra buffs. And yeah, okay, so as you can see, the pile looks nice and healthy. Um, that doesn't sound the best thing to say, actually. Um, and then, as you can see, it takes about 10 seconds, which is the only kind of annoying thing here. And then off we go. Now, just to be safe, I don't know if this is efficient or not, actually. I need to think about this. I used the overclock and um, call to arms ability. Obviously, that'll allow Leech to regain some health. But is it worth Leech regaining some health to have extra spikes? I'm not sure. I think um, that was not needed whatsoever. In reality, I think that could have made life a bit more difficult for us, maybe. So, as you can see, the spike pile is absolutely healthy and fine. We don't have any issues here. And we're off to a good start. It's just, I'm sure there may be a more optimal spike position. Actually, where I've put my Geraldo, I bet you could maybe get one there. Um, but you probably have to have like temple buffs and stuff. Then what I'm going to do is, just to show you a bit of optimization here, during this round, like I said, I always want you to be optimal and try and get stuff sorted when you can. I'm actually going to sell everything and get a um, Banana Central set up just before the round ends. And it's going to accumulate some money during the round if I can. Um, I was a bit slow there. But that's the kind of speed that you want to go at. Like, um, if you can afford a BRF, get it before the round ends. Not the BRF, sorry, Banana Central. Because that's going to allow you just to generate, you know, extra money and snowball. Like, if you collected, think, if you collected, like, five or six crates from that before the round ends, you know, you're nearly 10k up. Um, so that has a huge, huge effect. But basically, if you've done well with your farming, get a Banana Central. If you're a bit struggling with farming um, and you want any advice for that, let me know. But um, basically, just spam BRFs if you can't afford a Banana Central, and you will be fine. Luckily, because we're only going for basically a perma spike, it's very, very cost efficient. Okay, for tier three, we did the exact same as tier two, but instead of on seventy-seven, instead of getting a call to arms, we get a homeland. Okay, so we've got a homeland active from seventy-seven to eighty. Then I've just put down a cripple mob and a mad. This is just just in case. This is like a precautionary measure. I just wanted to make sure that the spike pile. Um, would be healthy enough basically so I decided let's just get some extra damage towers down just to take a few of the pops away from the spikes just in case they're not sufficient but I think they are sufficient um, we do get the insta kill here which is lovely I'm gonna call it an insta kill okay I know I know it's not really an insta kill because it takes 10 seconds to reach reach the spikes but to me this is maybe on this map this is the best you can do I don't know if you've got any other strategies please let me know um, currently we're fifth in the world and the times are quite slow but it has just came Came out so i'm not sure how people are finding this event i do think though that um, the times will probably get close by the end okay exact same thing uh, once again for tier four this time on 97 though build a temple and then get your call to arms a support temple i built it just next to my geraldo so it's in range of the perma spike as you can see though by looking at my perma spikes i had an absolute mare with getting the targeting right so please do this more optimally because that's where i'm going to lose you know a good maybe even 10 seconds on this one i do also have a degree 44 dart paragon at the start in conjunction with a cripple mob down and then i'm just going to keep putting farms down so we farmed quite well and um, we could have put even more defense down here and I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit off. I've got um, a little bit of a cold. It's just it's just always freezing in the UK. I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Um, but, you know, we're nice and warm inside today. And I'm just about to hit the gym. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so just make sure that you do this setup. And the Dark Paragon, honestly, pretty much carries you. I mean, because look how bad the perma spikes were. It was an absolute embarrassment. I was even thinking, right, I need to change something up here. This, this makes me laugh, though. What I did was, because I couldn't bear seeing it go down so slowly, I ended up just putting it on double speed right at the end here just to give me the illusion that it died quicker than what it did. Um, but as you can see, not too bad at all. 3 minutes 20, not bad. And then for round um, 120, I just basically ultra boosted the perma spike, kept everything else the same, and then I just went um, with a Ace Paragon, 
an NG Paragon, kept the Dark Paragon, then loads of snipers and obviously some Sun Avatars that can just make it in range. And then the Ray of Doom and Mad because they're my favourite. Look how bad that um, bomb ability was there from the plane. That was classic, classic V-Dan style. That completely scuff it and waste it. Um, brilliant. I also completely messed up using the Engineer. I got a degree 30 Engineer Paragon and it'll be about two turrets to insta-kill a bar. And I put the turrets at the start thinking this is going to be some genius move. But, of course, Leech moves pretty quick away from the start and the turrets were basically redundant. So maybe the Engineer Paragon isn't the best play here. Alternatively, I need to find a better place to put the turrets down. Um, so extremely suboptimal here, but extremely easy though, okay? Like you could just replace, you know, NG Paragon with a Boomer Paragon or a Ninja Paragon. They would have done absolutely fine. The Ace Paragon's obviously an absolute godsend. Loads of snipers just for the constant pinning down support. Um, and yeah, and that was, you know, that was the, the first run that I did. So it went quite well. I'm really intrigued to see how other people are finding it. So please let me know. Also, I'm going to post our Discord in the chat. Um, in the comments below so feel free to join it We're gonna have a super super healthy and fun um, community so thank you for all the support and i'll see you guys very soon